Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I just bought this sewing machine. I want to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to be doing here in the near future. So the guy who did these seats for me, he's been doing my stuff for, I mean, since the early 90s, I want to say. And uh, during the pandemic, he just disappeared. Uh, in fact, I think I was probably the last customer to have him do work because he was actually closing that location. He was going to move to another location and then the pandemic hit. So it was like, I get, think I got these done right before the pandemic started. And you see, he does a really nice job. So I would just keep going to him. He was fairly inexpensive, but uh, he's gone. So I found a lot of the upholstery guys are very uh, entitled on their pricing and a lot of them, and there's a there's actually not as many as there probably should be. So that's why the pricing has gotten out of, out of hand. So anyway, you know, like I used to get stuff like that done. So inexpensive that it didn't make sense for me to do my own stuff. I've always done my own headliners and stuff like that pretty much. I used to just take the whole car to them and have them do the whole thing. I mean, I used to have, when we were back in the 90s, I took my uh, convertible Nova to them and my Corvair it's basically the same interior and it was like a thousand nine hundred seventy five dollars for the whole thing done you know back years ago and he did those seats for me for like 750 guys were giving me quotes for fifteen hundred two thousand dollars for that set of seats and honestly it just doesn't make any sense at all to me for how long it takes and what the materials cost uh, so anyway uh i used to do some of my own upholstery years ago and I did it with a household machine. And it really is hard to do with a household machine. You need the proper machine. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain to you about what kind of a machine you need. Well, I still have this machine, which did a lot of stuff, but it just really wasn't the proper one. So my Mike's Random Videos channel, if you didn't know I have that, I have two channels, uh, three actually. Uh, but uh, that channel, I had a video out on the what you need to do, the basic, basic, basic thing to do, automotive upholstery. And the guy says, listen, I've got a good walking foot machine. It doesn't have reverse, but I can give it to you for a really reasonable price. Text it back and forth, gave me a really good deal on this. So I was able to buy it. Now I was looking at ones to buy. I'm going to put some links in the description about those ones that were pretty inexpensive, brand new on Amazon and a lot of people think so you'll, you'll look up at machines for sale full walking foot machines and I'll explain it to you what that is in a little bit but you look at full walking foot uh, triple feed machines and you'll go out and look at them and it's not a really a triple feed or it doesn't take the right equipment that you want on it or it you know it's used and the guy wants as much money as a new one so anyway in the description, I'm going to show you some similar machines that have reverse uh, that aren't too expensive and the attachments that you need to do automotive upholstery, which is what was lacking on this machine over here. This machine just, it, it does the stuff, but it doesn't really because it just doesn't have uh, the ability to put on the attachments. So the key thing to doing automotive upholstery is not your accurate, how accurate you are at sewing. It's having the proper attachments for the machine you have and having the machine that takes those attachments. Now this one's a Conso 225. They have a newer one, a Conso 206. You have Juki numbers that match those. This actually takes after the Singer 111, they had a Singer 11, 111, I think R, or it has a letter behind it, and that one had a reverse. It was basically the same machine with a reverse. So this is a basic sewing machine for doing automotive upholstery. It has what they call a walking foot. Now let me show you the difference between a walking foot, a triple feed walking foot, and a walking presser foot which is only a double feed machine. So if you look here at the needle, when you drop this guy here, um, the needle itself walks. 
So if you look at the needle, the needle goes up, oscillates down, pokes through, pulls back, and goes up and knock. It walks. So if you watch the process there, you can see the needle walking, and then the presser foot just lifts up and goes back down. And this machine, this old Rex, is a double feed walking foot. So the foot itself walks, and the needle goes straight up and down. And this is good, but not great. You can do automotive upholstery with something like this, but it just doesn't do the best job. And the biggest reason for that is the attachments. And the needle feed going through is much more positive. It will go through and pull the material perfectly and makes better stitches than the other machine. So, but what you need to do automotive upholstery is feet with different attachments on them. So this is what they call a welting foot. See, like I was able to do the upholstery on this one with the other one, and it's not the greatest job. But this here fits over that welt and makes it just so that that sews right on nice and straight. They have different sizes of these. They have 1 8th, 1 3 16th, then a quarter inch. I mean, they have a whole bunch of different sizes. You need a whole set of these. And I had to make these for this one. If you can see, I had to weld these on, okay? So I had to make these for this machine because they don't really make a proper one that fits on it. So for this machine, you can buy a full set of them for less than it costs for one of the welting feet for this machine because it's more popular for do using for automotive upholstery. Singer 111, they have a Juki, I think 180, 1181 or something, I forget. I don't know the number offhand, so don't quote me on that. But they have a whole bunch of them. I'll put the links in the description to show the other machines that you can use for automotive upholstery. And they have all the attachments that you can buy for that. So on this, if you see, that's what they either call a flat stitch or a French seam. I'm not sure which one. Uh, my friend used to call these flat stitches, and I don't know if that's correct, but some guys say French seam, and I don't know if French seam has a double one of these. I'm not sure, but anyway. They have a, another presser foot that goes on for that. So you have the set of presser feet for the welting, you have a set of presser seat feet for the, uh, it basically drops down and goes in the seam and then follows that so that that stitch comes out exactly at an eighth of an inch away from that seam. When you sew it, it's just pretty, you know, it's not hard to do. It just takes time. So doing a really nice job in automotive upholstery is more of a time consuming thing than talent. A lot of people think, oh, I can't sew straight. Well, a lot of people can't sew straight. And if you have all the proper attachments in the proper machine, it's really not terribly hard to do. Uh, there is some learning curve, of course, but I think it's probably 80% the equipment and 20% uh, of talent. So I'm going to do some videos on automotive upholstery. In fact, I'm going to do the seats for this and I want them to look really nice. So I wanted to have the proper machine to do it. And since I'm going to be doing it more, again, since the guy I used for years uh, is either dead or just disappeared or ran out of money. And I mean, he was there for 40 years. So it's pretty shocking that he would just be gone rather than, you know, something health wise came up. Um, it's just kind of strange that, you know, after 40 years, and nobody seems to know where he went. You know, a lot of people were using the same comp place, and we just don't know what happened. So, anyway, I figured it'd be an opportunity for me to teach how to do some automotive upholstery, and again, learn together um, with you guys that want to watch and learn how to do it yourself. Uh, I do know how to do the seat to uh, build out a seat 
foam and stuff like that pretty well um, and I do know how to sew a bit but I didn't have the proper equipment so I'm hoping that now that I have the proper equipment I can do it so what you need is a walking foot machine link in the description check you can see if you're interested in learning this or buying one links are in the description for all these things you need a welting foot a French seam foot set okay there's sets for each one because there's right and left for this French seam there's a whole bunch of stuff to do on that and then you need a machine that also has a servo motor so this is a servo motor and it's designed to go very slow and that's what you want it to have power and go very slow this is a clutch motor if you see it's much larger than the other it's designed to go fast they both have a lot of power but this one will also go fast too so the clutch the servo motor is the newest thing you know to use so also I found in the used market that a lot of people are super entitled on their pricing as well so I was gonna just buy a new one and then one of the subscribers and I was kind of hesitant in doing it so because my work has been dead and I don't really you know I don't really want to I would have preferred just to pay somebody but with my work being slow uh, I'm not gonna be able to afford to pay somebody three four five thousand dollars to do my seats and my carpet and stuff like that when it only costs you know two hundred dollars to three hundred dollars for materials and literally I could you know do it myself and then have the machine so anyway if you're in that same boat stay tuned for the future videos on some of this stuff and you'll see how it turns out maybe you can figure to do it yourself and the key thing is though is those links in the description down there click on those and you'll see the tools that you need to do this right another thing that you will need to do automotive upholstery is to do your carpet you want to have a nice binder on it this is a binder jig you just take the binder and you put it up slide it into here and then you just run your carpet through the machine and it comes out like this so it's really the trick is again is having the right tools I was actually able to do that with this machine believe it or not um, and it works fine for doing that so if you were looking on let's say the internet or whatever and you were looking into doing automotive upholstery and uh, there are out there some of the things that might be misleading to you um, there's a lot of companies that sell a double feed not a triple feed like this with the needle that walks like that machine the double feed machine and they sell it as a walking foot machine and they do they do not work nearly as well as a full walking foot I've used the other one um, and I know the disadvantages after using it so really getting the proper machine is important don't be misled by some of those videos they, they sell supplies and stuff and they sell these things for it and literally these are half the price if you have a full walking foot machine some of their machines have you know they sell these things for like three or four times the prices you can get them on Amazon and the links that I'm showing you and you know it's again you end up stuck in their little rut of how to buy their stuff so anyway this is going to be more of the basic information that you need you know I'm not an expert at this obviously I'm just starting doing it and uh, again the reason I'm starting to do it is because I'm looking at there's very limited amount of people doing automotive upholstery in where I live and the guys that are doing it they've raised their prices tremendously and maybe you're in the same boat and you're just like you know what and, or maybe there's some new guys who are young who want to learn how to do it um, 
there are very few YouTube channels that teach it. Uh, there's a guy called Cefalo, I think. He's in Mexico. Great channel. Teaches some amazing stuff. He does not speak English. In fact, he does not speak in the videos. He has little notes of everything. It's really kind of helpful, but I figured since there's not a lot of people teaching it, I figured it might be a good idea to teach and learn from somebody who's more fresh at learning it than somebody who's just been doing it for years. Uh, sometimes when you try to learn something from someone who's been doing the same thing for years, they forget how that they learned how to do that and they'll just tell you oh you just use this needle you use this thing and this is the way you do it and you go well why and he can't explain to you why because he's just been doing it that for your way for years so it might be a little easier for some people to learn from me how to do some of this work so i don't know like i said i'm not the expert at it but i think i can do a good job with the proper machine and uh, that's what we're doing now I'm gonna sell that one and put this one in that place I'm gonna put some casters on it so it'll roll around I did make a cover for it over there it's one of the reasons that I've been neglecting cleaning up here I actually had it pretty well cleaned up and then made it a mess again that's just what happens over and over but um, this is why is because I'm gonna be putting this machine over there and a few other things got to move everything around so and one of the reasons i haven't been doing videos is i don't want to make dust uh, with that car and get this new machine all covered in it so anyway another thing that uh that you might want to get that you again you need the proper machine that takes the attachments uh i've been looking at this thing i haven't got it on there yet but what this is is a drop down feed wheel um, and what it does is you can see some of the stuff on Cefalo's channel if you watch them and this bolts on right there you can see it bolts on right here there's two threaded holes this thing actually normally bolts on on my other machine I'll show you over here because I've got it already set up for it it comes with two threaded holes here and you just you just bolt that on there and then put your stuff in there and once it's set up you just drop the thing and just run it through it's really not hard to do it's just got to keep the carpet in the groove I had to actually modify this and widen it up a little bit because it comes a little too narrow and there's different sizes of these there's a set of three of them I found to buy the whole set is actually cheaper than and this is the, the proper size for automotive I believe it's 50 millimeter but it's cheaper to buy the whole set of these than it was to buy just one from the company that sells those things you know the one on the internet you can get these on Amazon they're a little harder to find so that's why we put links in there so this one the threaded holes are over there so I've got a modify it and have to make a longer piece for that i don't know if they make one longer they might but anyway i think there's actually threaded holes on here too on this plate that i can use to do it so anyway but that's how that thing works there's so this stuff some of these things might require some modification but you know it's having the proper jigs for doing the, the work is the key to doing automotive upholstery um, and knowing some of the stuff you know getting sewing straight and down the pleats and stuff like that is a little bit of a learning curve there but a lot of it like you putting on welting you know it's not hard when you have a good welting foot the proper size and you put it on there you just run it through and it just goes and then you drop your feed guide you drop this thing down and you've got this nice little wheel that just stays right at quarter of an inch or 10 millimeter or 
whatever you're doing, seven sixteenths, three eighths. You just set up this thing here by moving this thing back and forth, and then that little wheel just stays right there, and you just put the material up against it and just push it right through. So it's not hard. The key thing is, is having a machine that takes all the jigs. That's the key to doing it. So that's what I found. Took me a while to figure it out, but you know, cause nobody was telling me. Uh, so anyway, except for this subscriber, he decided that, you know, I was wanting to learn anything. Hey, do you want a machine? I have an extra one. And uh, he's, and you know, he says it doesn't have reverse. So the thing is, without without reverse, it's not that big a deal. People don't get freaked out about it. All you do is you lift up. You could do a couple, you do a couple stitches. You lift up, you back it up, and you start over again, if you need to. And a lot of times you don't need to do reverse because you're sewing over another direction. If you're going over another direction, you don't need it. So it's not that big a deal to not have reverse. It is. It would be nice if it did. But the difference in price is quite a bit more. And you could find a used machine if you could for cheap enough with uh, like this one, the 225 Conso. 226 I think has reverse. If you can find a 206 Conso, it's a good machine. It's a 206 RB I think they're called. I don't know. There's the numbers on there, the letters on there. And then there's a new one called a 1206 which is basically the same as a 206, but made, I don't know, might be made in Taiwan or something like that. But, you know, people go, oh, I want the old one because it's Japanese steel and all this other stuff. And I don't know. The guys at Conso say the 1206 is a great machine. So I'm going to say probably they're right. I'm not going to say that they're going to sell junk because they sell good machines. So the new one is probably not made in Japan and that's the reason why they numbered it 1206 and it's called a premiere I think so anyway this is just kind of the basic knowledge on the machines if you're interested in automotive upholstery if you're interested in learning it I'm going to be doing some videos on that and like I said I'm not an expert but uh, I am going to do my best to try and teach it as I'm learning and another little trick I was going to show, show in this video it's one of these commercial staplers like this. I was watching Chafalo do his, and sometimes I found that it's kind of difficult to just feed everything. And sometimes you want everything, you know, instead of, you know, when you sew, if you ever sewed before, you use straight pins and kind of hold everything together with straight pins. And then or my mom used to pull the straight pins out, and she'd sew a little bit, pull another straight pin out and sew it. So you'd have it all pinned together. Uh, in automotive upholstery, what you do, if it's a hidden seam, you just use stapler and you staple it together first. And then you're, you know, staple it where you're not going to be hitting it with the needle. And usually it'll kind of slide over the side anyway. But um, you staple it around there and then it holds it in place. So having one of these nice staplers is important too this maybe I'll put a link in the description for that so anyway if you're interested in doing automotive upholstery stick around we're going to do some of it and doing the uh, 54 oval window seats I'm also going to do my truck seats I needed some stuff done and the guy was gone so I was like well I'm kind of out of money myself I don't we're not out of money but I just don't want to spend it because I'm using up what I've got you know the pandemics kind of run me dry so I'm just going to keep going and I've got, you know, enough to get by. And there's no worries about that. Uh, YouTube's been helping me with a little bit, you know, and, and other things. So, uh, but, you know, I just don't have any extra like I used to to spend on stuff because everything changed. You know, my work just changed. They just decided we're doing things different. You're no longer in it. So <laughs> it's just the way it is. For right now, it'll, it'll turn around. I'm not really worried about it. And especially with all this stuff, you guys, the banking and all this other stuff that's going crazy. It's just like, nah, I'm not spending any money. I'm just going to lie low, and cruise, do some of my own stuff. And maybe you're in the same boat and you can afford a machine and uh, you want to learn and do some of the stuff yourself. It might be a good chance to do so. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. hope this is enough information for you to get started. Talk to you then.